Let's start at the bottom, the troposphere. This is where we live, breathe, and experience all the weather on Earth. Extending from the surface up to about 12 kilometers, this layer is thicker at the equator and thinner at the poles. It's packed with oxygen, nitrogen, and water vapor, making it the perfect home for life. This layer contains about 75% of all atmospheric air and nearly all water vapor, forming the clouds we see. But it's also home to the chaos of weather. Every storm, hurricane, and snowfall you've ever seen, it all happens here. The higher you go, the cooler it gets. That's because air expands and cools as pressure decreases. Here, the temperature drops as you go higher, roughly 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer. At the very bottom is the boundary layer, where the Earth's surface affects air movement. Wind, heat from the sun, and turbulence mix everything. Heat, moisture, even pollutants. And at the top, that's the tropopause, sitting around 7 to 10 kilometer high at the poles and up to 18 kilometers near the equator. Airplanes fly in the troposphere, but just at the very top to avoid turbulence caused by weather. But what happens above it? Well, that's where things get even more interesting. Above the troposphere, we enter the stratosphere, stretching from 12 and 50 kilometers up. The most important thing here, the ozone layer. This invisible shield absorbs the sun's deadly ultraviolet rays, protecting us from skin cancer and radiation. Without it, stepping outside during the day would be a death sentence. The air here is calm. There are no storms or turbulence, which is why some high-altitude aircraft and spy planes, like the legendary U-2, cruise at this altitude. And if you've ever seen a weather balloon rising, yep, they go up into the stratosphere, gathering crucial data about our planet. But here's the weird part. The higher you go, the warmer it gets. Unlike the troposphere, where temperature drops with altitude, the stratosphere heats up because of all the energy the ozone layer absorbs. Okay, let's push higher, to a place where the air is so thin it starts to feel like space. Welcome to the mesosphere, 50 and 80 kilometers above Earth. This is where meteors meet their fiery end. Every shooting star you've ever wished upon, it was a space rock burning up in this very layer, superheated by friction with the thin air. But while meteors burn, humans would freeze. The mesosphere is the coldest place in Earth's atmosphere, with temperatures plunging to minus 80 degrees Celsius. It's so cold that odd glowing clouds made of ice crystals, called noctilucent clouds, form here. And unlike the stratosphere below, this layer is turbulent. Winds can reach hundreds of kilometers per hour, swirling chaotically in patterns we still don't fully understand. It's a strange, mysterious zone, one of the least explored parts of the atmosphere, because it's too high for planes, but too low for satellites. But we're not stopping here. Let's go higher, into a region where the air is so thin it starts to disappear. Now we enter the thermosphere, reaching 80 and 700 kilometers above Earth. Here, the atmosphere is so thin that it's practically space. This is where the International Space Station orbits, and where astronauts experience microgravity. It's also where the most stunning light show on Earth happens, the auroras. When charged particles from the sun smash into this layer, they create those glowing green and red waves in the sky. But the thermosphere isn't always peaceful. During intense solar storms, it expands and contracts, disrupting GPS signals and even pushing satellites off course. Here, temperatures can reach up to 2,500 degrees Celsius. But if you were here, you wouldn't feel hot at all. Why? Because the air is so thin, there aren't enough molecules to transfer heat to your body. At this altitude, we are standing on the doorstep of outer space, but there's one final layer left. Finally, we reach the exosphere, the last and thinnest layer of our atmosphere. It starts around 700 kilometers and extends up to 10,000 kilometers. This is where our satellites orbit, silently circling Earth, beaming down the signals that power the internet, GPS, and weather forecasts. Where does Earth's atmosphere end and space begin? There's no clear boundary, but most scientists go with the Karman line, 100 kilometers up, since 99.9999% of our atmosphere is below it. The air here is so sparse that molecules can travel hundreds of kilometers before colliding with another. But here's the twist. A 2019 study found that Earth's outermost layer, a cloud of hydrogen called the Geocorona, might stretch a staggering 9,300 kilometers into space, way past the moon's orbit. So, is Earth's atmosphere bigger than we thought? Well, the answer might surprise you. So the next time you look up at the sky, remember, you're not just looking into empty space, you're gazing through layers of invisible protection, stretching all the way to the stars. If you find this video useful, like the video, subscribe to Kozo Geo and show me your support. See you in the next video.